all she could do was cry. Oh God, I am tired of being molested and bullied. Why can't you answer my prayers for once? She cried out. Her heart felt heavy with sadness. The boys laughed even more, enjoying her misery. They surrounded her, pushing her and mocking her. Ngozi's heart raced as she tried to get away. In the eastern part of Nigeria, there was a girl named Ngozi. She lived in a small village that was once ruled by her parents, Ezobina and Lolo Neka. They were the king and queen of their land, and people loved them very much. The village was beautiful, with green fields and tall trees. Children played happily in the streets, and everyone respected the royal family. But one day, everything changed. Ngozi lost her parents in a tragic accident. The village mourned their king and queen, but the sorrow did not end there. After their death, Ngozi's uncle was made the king. He wanted the throne badly. He believed that he could rule better than anyone else. But not long after he took the throne, he was mysteriously poisoned. People in the village were shocked. They didn't know who did it. But many began to whisper and point fingers. Soon, they started to blame Ngozi. They believed that she wanted revenge for what happened to her parents. They thought she was trying to take back the throne that had been taken from her family. But Ngozi was innocent. She loved her parents and would never harm anyone. However, the villagers did not care. They were filled with anger and fear. From that day on, life became very hard for Ngozi. She was no longer the princess. Instead, she was treated like an outcast. People stared at her with hatred and some even shouted hurtful words. They bullied her wherever she went to or whenever they see her. They called her names and pushed her away. They forgot that she was once their beloved princess. Ngozi felt lonely and scared. She wandered around the village, searching for food and a place to sleep. Most days, she barely had enough to eat. Sometimes, she found a little fruit or a piece of bread in the trash. Other times, kind strangers would give her something to eat. But those moments were rare. She often slept outside, using leaves as her blanket when it was cold. Each day felt like a new struggle. She would wake up with a heavy heart, wishing things were different. She missed her parents and her old life. She missed being loved and cared for. But most of all, she missed the laughter and joy she once felt. Days turned into weeks, and the weeks turned into months. Ngozi grew tired. She felt like she was living in a nightmare that never ended. The villagers forgot about her past. And all they saw was a dirty girl wandering the streets. She prayed every day for things to change. She begged God to help her, to take away the pain and the sadness. One sunny afternoon, while walking through the village, Ngozi saw a group of boys. She knew them all too well. They were the same boys who always bullied her. Her heart sank as she realized they were coming her way. She wanted to run, but her legs felt heavy. She closed her eyes and whispered a prayer. Oh God, please protect me. Please don't let them hurt me. But the boys approached her, laughing and shouting. Look who we have here, the princess. What are you doing in this dirty environment? Ngozi, one boy shouted. They thought it was funny to see her like this, and it made them feel powerful. Please, I beg you guys, don't hurt me. Ngozi pleaded, tears rolling down her cheeks. But the boys didn't listen. They remembered how she used to be the princess. They thought it was unfair that she had fallen so low. Shut up! You don't know what you did to us when you were the princess of the village. One of the boys yelled. His voice filled with anger. Ngozi felt helpless. She wanted to explain that she was not a threat. That she was just a girl who lost everything. But words failed her. All she could do was cry. 
Oh God, I am tired of being molested and bullied. Why can't you answer my prayers for once? She cried out. Her heart felt heavy with sadness. The boys laughed even more, enjoying her misery. They surrounded her, pushing her and mocking her. Ngozi's heart raced as she tried to get away. But she stumbled and fell to the ground. The laughter echoed in her ears and she wished she could disappear. Just then, a woman passing by saw what was happening. She rushed over and shouted, Leave that girl alone! Her voice was strong and fierce. The boy stopped and looked at the woman in surprise. They didn't expect anyone to stand up for Ngozi. Go home and leave her in peace. The woman ordered. The boys, frightened by her bravery, slowly backed away and left. Ngozi looked up at her, grateful and relieved. Thank you so much, ma, she whispered, stiff shaking. The woman knelt beside her and wiped Ngozi's tears with her hands. You don't have to be afraid. You are stronger than you think, she said kindly. What is your name? Ngozi, she replied softly. Ngozi, you are a special child. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You are still a child of God and you will overcome this darkness, the woman said. For the first time in a long while, Ngozi felt a spark of hope. The woman helped her to her feet and smiled. Come with me. I will take you to my home. You will stay with me for a while. Ngozi hesitated. She was not used to accepting help from anyone. But something in the woman's eyes made her trust her. Okay, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. As they walked together, Ngozi felt a warmth in her heart. She realized that there were still kind people in the world. She looked up at the sky and whispered another prayer. Thank you God for sending me help. The woman led her to a small house at the edge of the village. It was not big, but it looked warm and welcoming. This is my home. You can stay here as long as you need. The woman said as she entered. Inside, the house smelled of food and Ngozi's stomach growled. I will make us some lunch, the woman said with a smile. You must be hungry. Ngozi nodded, feeling grateful for the kindness shown to her. As the woman prepared the meal, Ngozi sat at the table, her heart slowly beginning to heal. She thought about the bullying and the pain she had faced. But now, she felt a glimmer of hope and peace. As they finished eating, the woman introduced herself. My name is Mama Ifi. I used to be a teacher in this village. I know how hard it can be, especially for a girl like you. But remember, you are not alone anymore. Because he listened, feeling inspired. Mama Ifi was wise and kind. She shared stories about the village, and Ngozi felt like she was slowly coming back to life. But deep down, she knew that her struggles were not over. The villagers still hated her, and she had lost her title as a princess. She could not forget what had happened to her family. But as she sat there with Mama Ifi, she began to believe that maybe, just maybe, she could find her way back to happiness. That night, as Ngozi lay on a comfortable bed for the first time in a long while, she whispered a prayer. Thank you God for this new chance. I will not give up. I will find my way. And with that thought, she closed her eyes, dreaming of a better tomorrow. The sun was setting in the village, painting the sky with shades of orange and pink. It was becoming quieter and the birds sang their final songs for the day. Mama Ifi had gone to her farm, leaving Ngozi alone at the entrance of the small house. She sat on the steps, her heart feeling a little lighter after her encounter with Mama Ifi. But just as she began to feel a bit of peace, she noticed a group of boys approaching. Her stomach sank as she recognized them. They were the same boys who had bullied her the day before. Before she could run or hide, they were upon her. Their laughter echoing in the air like thunder. They grabbed her roughly and dragged her towards a nearby bush far from any praying eyes. Ngozi on her knees looked up at the leader of the group. He towered over her, his face twisted in anger. Her voice trembled 
as she gathered the courage to speak. I was never wicked as a princess. She said softly, I did my best to be good to the people around me. I don't know what you are talking about. Her words only fueled their rage. One of the other boys, taller and with a quail smike, stepped forward. So now you are talking back to my boss, Abby. Don't worry, we will treat your case today. You think you can kill that man and his wife and go free? You must be joking. Ngozi's heart raised. Please don't harm me. I'm just an innocent girl. She pleaded, tears streaming down her face. But they didn't listen. The leader took a step closer. Eyes filled with malice. No need for pleading. He said coldly, You see the five of us here? We will have our way with you. And no one will stop us. Fear surged through Ngozi's body. Jesus, please, I'm begging you, please, don't do this to me. She cried out. But her cries fell on deaf ears. The boys grabbed her and dragged her towards an uncompleted building beside the bush. Ngozi fought and struggled, but she was no match for them. They took her inside, away from the road where no one could see them. Inside the building, the nightmare began. All five took turn abusing her. Ngozi screamed and cried, but no one came to her aid. When they were finally done, they left her lying on the cold, dirty ground, bleeding and broken. Ngozi lay there for hours, crying softly as blood ran down her legs. She tried to stand up, but her body was too weak. She screamed for help, but whenever someone approached and saw it was her, they would turn away. Some people even spat on her before walking away. Ngozi remained in that forsaken building bleeding and crying her voice grew weaker with every passing hour but she never stopped calling for help her body ached and she felt like she was losing all hope a man passing noticed her lying close to an old building his heart sank at the sight he rushed over and carefully picked her up her body limp and cold help someone please help he shouted fear gripping him Ngozi's breathing was faint, almost gone, but he didn't give up. He hurriedly carried her toward the nearest hospital, praying that she would survive the journey. When they reached the hospital, the man's heart sank. Ngozi had stopped breathing, but he didn't give up. He rushed inside, begging the doctors to save her. The doctors immediately admitted her and began to check her condition. The man, whose name was Dennis, paced back and forth outside the hospital room, his heart racing. He didn't know Ngozi personally, but seeing her in such a terrible state made him feel compelled to do something. Minutes later, the doctor came out, his face serious. The chances of her surviving are very low. He said, there is only a 30% chance that she will make it. I'm scared to even operate on her. Dennis looked at the doctor in disbelief. Oh, you're a doctor. How can you be scared of operating on your patients? Doctor, please, you need to save this girl. I'll pay any amount you need. The doctor sighed. You don't understand. This is a very complicated case. By the way, what's your name? My name is Dennis, he replied. Determination in his eyes. Please, doctor, do your best. Save her. After their conversation, Dennis left the hospital, his mind racing with thoughts and worries. He hoped and prayed that the doctor would find a way to help Ngozi. Two days later, Dennis returned to the hospital, anxious to know how Ngozi was doing. He walked straight to the front office, where a nurse was sitting. Please, where is the doctor? Dennis asked. The nurse pointed towards the doctor's office. He's inside, she said. Dennis quickly made his way to the doctor's office and knocked on the door. Doctor, good afternoon, he greeted as he entered. The doctor looked up from his desk. Good afternoon, sir. You were gone for two days. What happened? I've been thinking about Ngozi. How is she? Dennis asked, his voice full of concern. The doctor sighed. We managed to stabilize her, but she is still in critical condition. We are doing everything we can, but it's touch and go. 
Dennis felt a pang of desperation. What can I do? Is there anything I can do to help her? He pleaded. The doctor looked at him thoughtfully. We need to gather some blood. If you are willing, you can donate. It might help save her life. Without hesitation, Dennis nodded. Of course, I'll do anything for her. The doctor led him to the blood donation area where nurses prepared for the procedure. As Dennis sat down, he felt a mix of fear and determination. He thought of Ngozi lying in that hospital bed, fighting for her life, and he knew he had to be strong. Once the blood was drawn, the nurse assured Dennis that it would be used immediately. Thank you for helping her, she said with a kind smile. Dennis left the donation area and sat in the waiting room. His heart heavy with worry, he looked at the clock, watching the seconds tick by slowly. Please God, he whispered, let her be okay. After what felt like an eternity, the doctor emerged from the operating room. Dennis stood up, holding his breath, searching the doctor's face for any sign of hope. She's made it through the surgery, the doctor announced, and Dennis' heart soared. But she's still unconscious. We need to monitor her closely for the next few days. Dennis let out a sigh of relief. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, God. The doctor smiled gently. Let's just hope she wakes up soon. We will need to keep her spirits high. Dennis nodded, feeling a sense of responsibility for the girl he barely knew. He made a decision then and there. He would stay by her side and help her through the dark time. She might have been a falling princess, but now she needed a friend. As he walked into Ngozi's room, he felt a mixture of emotions. There she lay, pale and fragile, but alive. Then he pulled a chair close and sat beside her bed, holding her hand gently. I'm here, Ngozi. You are not alone anymore, he whispered, hoping she could hear him. He stayed by her side talking softly about the village, about Mama Ifi and her kindness, and about how beautiful life could still be. He read her stories from a book he found in the hospital waiting room, trying to keep her spirit alive. And while Ngozi lay in her unconscious state, a flicker of hope began to glow in the darkness of despair, reminding her that the world still held kindness and love. Meanwhile, Mama Ifi returned from the farm and didn't see Ngozi she searched for her without luck. She then concluded that maybe she had decided to run out of the village. Dennis sat across from the doctor, waiting anxiously for an update about Ngozi's condition. The atmosphere in the room felt heavy, and the ticking clock on the wall seemed to move more slower with every second. The doctor's words replayed in Dennis's mind, 30% chance of survival and the feeling of dread washed over him. Finally, Dennis spoke. I had to leave for two days because I'm a leader somewhere, and there were urgent matters to attend to. He explained, but I'm here now. What's the situation with the girl? The doctor took a deep breath and looked at Dennis in the eyes. It's not looking good, he said solemnly. The girl is gradually fading. That 30% chance I mentioned earlier, it seems even less now. She's sleeping away. Dennis felt his heart sank. What? Doctor, please, you have to try your best. This lady has been through so much already. She doesn't deserve this. The doctor didn't answer right away. Instead, he kept a serious expression on his face. As though he was thinking about something troubling. There is something strange about her case. The doctor said after a pause, She's breathing. But she is not blinking, not moving. It's like she's there, existing. I hope it's not one of those situations. Dennis furrowed his brow in confusion. Doctor, what are you talking about? What kind of situation? The doctor leaned forward slightly, his voice lowering. In some cases, where a person is very close to death, after suffering some injuries, their spirit may leave their body. Sometimes, these spirits don't just go to the afterlife. They stay around to seek revenge or find someone who can help them. Someone who can see them. Dennis couldn't believe what he was hearing. Doctor, are you serious? I thought that only happens in movies or stories. This is real life. 
I know it sounds unbelievable, the doctor replied, but it does happen. And if it's happening now, it's going to be very difficult for us to handle. We have to hope and pray that it's not the case. Then he sat back in his chair, feeling both fear and confusion. The idea that Ngozi's spirit could leave her body to seek revenge was too much to process. He didn't know what to think. As the doctor's words settled in his mind, something else was happening in Ngozi's hospital room. Hours passed and slowly, her spirit began to separate from her body. It was like a soft mist into the air. Ngozi's spirit stood at the left side of her body, looking down at herself. Her eyes filled with tears, and the pain of everything that had happened to her weighed heavily on her. For more than 30 minutes, Ngozi's spirit cried silently. The room was still, and the sound of her quiet sobbing was the only noise. Finally, she stopped crying. She wiped her eyes and stood tall, her expression hardening with determination. I will not let this go, Ngozi whispered to herself. I will leave no stone unturned until I get justice. With that, she turned and left the room, her spirit moving through the walls and out in the world. Her body remained in the hospital bed, but her spirit was on a mission. The first place Ngozi visited was the house of one of the men who had hurt her. The man was sitting in his living room with his family. His wife and children were gathered around the table laughing and sharing a meal the warmth of the home was a stark contrast to the cold dark reality that ngozi had experienced the man was smiling but then he heard a soft knock on the door he stood up excused himself from the table and went to open it when he did his smile vanished standing before him was ngozi her spirit covered in blood her eyes filled with tears Jesus Christ, the man gasped, stepping back in fear. What are you doing here? How did you find me? Please, I'm sorry. Behind him, his daughter noticed his strange behavior. Dad, why are you talking like that? Who are you talking to? The man pointed at Ngozi, his hand shaking. Can't you see her? She's right there. She's crying. His wife, confused, walked over to him. Darling, there's no one here. Who are you talking about? Don't you see her? The man said, his voice trembling. She's right there in front of us. The wife sighed and shook her head. Oh, my children, it seems your father is rehearsing for his new role in the upcoming movie. Let's leave him to practice. Okay, mom. The children responded in unison, giggling as they went back to the table. The man's heart raced as he stared at Ngozi. She stepped closer to him, her face filled with pain and anger. You killed me. Ngozi said, her voice low but sharp. You took my life so you could succeed in yours. But let me tell you something. You won't live to enjoy what you've done. I didn't leave. So neither will you. The man fell to his knees, trembling. Please don't kill me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for what I did to you. Behind him, his wife and children continued to laugh, unaware of what was truly happening. Wow, my husband. The wife said, clapping her hands, You are really acting out your movie role well. We are so proud of you. They all burst into laughter again. But the man couldn't focus on them. All he could see was Ngozi's tear-streaked face, her eyes filled with vengeance. The man's wife continued laughing at him, completely unaware of the danger her husband was in. She teased him, her voice full of amusement. Ah, wahala! You can really act. This is so funny. Can you see how hard I'm laughing? Ngozi's ghost stood there, bloodied and serious, looking at the man. You see, this acting that your wife and children think you are doing, this is what will kill you. Now, follow me. Without hesitation, the man nodded. Okay, he said. His voice trembling as he followed Ngozi step by step out of the house. They walked down the street together. The man keeping his eyes on Ngozi, his mind was blank with fear, unable to process what was happening, but he knew he had to follow her no matter what. As they reached the main road, the man continued walking behind her, not noticing the speeding car coming his way. 
In an instant, boom, the car hit him, throwing him into the air. He landed hard on the ground and died instantly. Ngozi looked at the scene with cold eyes, shaking her head. Oh boy, this driver no get joy at all. She muttered to herself. How can you be so wicked to knock down a man who was almost going to be a celebrity of the year? She laughed to herself, her voice echoing in the empty streets. Dawn, next person, she said and vanished from the spot. The next target was a man who was lying in bed with a woman. They were both deep in the middle of something inappropriate. When the woman suddenly started acting strange, her movements became rough and she began gripping the man tightly. Hey, slow down. Why are you strangling me? The man asked in confusion, trying to push her off. But the woman didn't answer. Her eyes were distant and cold, as if she wasn't in control of herself. And in truth, she wasn't. Ngozi was controlling her, making her do things that she wouldn't normally do. The woman's hands wrapped tighter and tighter around the man's neck until his face turned red. His gasp for air became weaker and soon. He stopped moving altogether. The woman, now free from Ngozi's control, looked down at the lifeless man in shock. She jumped out of bed and ran out of the room, not looking back. Ngozi, watching from the shadows, smiled. Dawn, next person, she whispered, moving on to her next target. Meanwhile, at the hospital, the doctor was still monitoring Ngozi's body, and Dennis was there every day, hoping and praying she would wake up. But her condition hadn't changed. She was still lying there, breathing but not moving, her spirit far away. The next person on Ngozi's list was a man who was fast asleep in his bed. As he slept, he began to dream, a nightmare that felt all too real. In the dream, he was being chased by Ngozi, who had a knife in her hand. Her eyes were blood red, filled with anger and pain. He ran as fast as he could. But every time he turned, there was no escape. Every path he took led him back to her. Finally, in the dream, there was no more road to run on. Ngozi consumed him. Her knife raised. With a swift motion, she stabbed him. The man jolted awake, shouting, Blood of Jesus, I will not die in Jesus' name. But as he looked around, he heard a cold voice, You will die in Jesus' name, Ngozi said appearing at the foot of his bed the man's eyes widened in fear what is this another dream or is this real ngozi laughed so now you think you are joseph the dreamer no this is real and it's me it is time time for what the man shouted will you stop this nonsense ngozi's face darkened even now you are still being rude you haven't learned a thing maybe we should do the same thing that brought me here in the first place. The man's fear quickly turned to arrogance. Yes, you are right, he said, a grin spreading across his face. We should. I'm honey as ever, and you are always so sweet. Ngozi climbed onto the bed. Moving close to him, she got on top of him, or instead of what the man expected, she wrapped her hands around his throat and began to squeeze. The man struggled, but Ngozi's grip was strong. Slowly, his strength faded, and soon he gave up. Ngozi looked down at him with disgust. Stupid man, she muttered. You wanted to taste again, huh? Well, go and taste in the land of the ghost. She stood up and whispered to herself. Dawn, next. Back at the hospital, Dennis was growing with more anxious. He couldn't understand why Ngozi wasn't waking up, and every day that passed made him more worried. Doctor, what is the next move? Dennis asked, pacing back and forth. The doctor sighed, clearly frustrated by the situation. Mr. Dennis, if she isn't awake by 9 a.m. on Thursday, we will have to discharge her. There is nothing more we can do. Dennis stopped in the track. Doctor, that's just the day after tomorrow. Please. There has to be something else you can try. But the doctor shook his head. I'm afraid that's all I can do. The story opens with a man in the middle of the road. He was so happy, singing, dancing because he had just secured a new job and a new house. 
His joy was overwhelming and he couldn't stop smiling. People passing by were looking at him with curious eyes. But he didn't care. It was his moment and he was going to celebrate. As the man danced and celebrated his good news, Ngozi watched from afar, her emotions in chaos. She was both laughing and crying at the same time. She felt torn between happiness and sadness. Oh, you are so happy. She muted to herself, and I'm supposed to be sad. But am I sad? Of course not. Ngozi, stop lying to yourself. She laughed a bit louder this time, but there was no real joy in her laughter. It was filled with bitterness. She walked closer to the man, still deep in thought. When the man noticed her, he stopped dancing and stared at her, confused. Who is this? He muttered under his breath. Then he remembered, oh no, it's you again. You are still around. You just can't accept that I've used you and dumped you, can you? The man's voice was filled with arrogance and he chuckled, shaking his head. Because he looked at him with cold eyes. Bravo, you've used me and dumped me. Well, I'm also here to use and dump you. No need for too much talking. The man was taken aback by boldness. Hold on. Do you know who you're talking to? I'm the newest house owner and I've just gotten a great job. You better mind how you speak to me, he said proudly, puffing out his chest. Ngozi gave him a cold smile. Congratulations, but take this as a little gift from me, a token of appreciation for using and dumping me, she said as she waved her hand. Immediately, the man's eyes grew white and he began to act strangely. He started pulling his hair, screaming and laughing uncontrollably. People around were shocked, watching as the man ran mad, completely losing control of himself. Ngozi watched him with a smile. Nonsense, you think you can harm me and get away with it. Dawn, nursed, she said quietly to herself as she walked away. Nursed. She found herself standing outside the house. Inside the house, a man was eating with his wife and children. They were having dinner, chatting and laughing. But suddenly, the man looked up and froze when he saw Ngozi approaching the house. What the... What are you doing here? The man stammered, shocked. His face turned pale and he started to sweat. His wife, noticing his reaction, looked at him with concern. Baby, are you okay? She asked, what's wrong? Can't you see her? The man asked, pointing in Ngozi's direction. She's right there. The wife glanced at the direction he was pointing. There is no one there. She said frowning. The only thing I see is a goat. Are you talking about the goat? Realizing his mistake, the man stammered. Oh, yes, yes, I was talking about the goat. He laughed nervously, trying to hide his fear. His wife looked at him suspiciously but said nothing. Ngozi entered the house, her eyes fixed on the man. Look at your wife and children. She whispered, her voice icy. How do you think they will feel when I kill you now? How would they survive? And your wife is heavily pregnant. She needs you more than ever. But you would die. You would die the day you finally have enough money to take care of them. The man's face turned pale as fear washed over him. But Ngozi was done with him. She left the house, muttering, done, next person. As she walked away, Ngozi began to feel tired. I guess my mission here is done. She said to herself, I need to return to my body. But wait, even if I wake up, people will still hate me. What's the point? She sighed and continued walking towards the village market. A few minutes later, she arrived at her destination and noticed a young man staring at her. He was looking at her intently, as though he could see something special about her. Yeah. Why is this guy looking at me like that? She thought to herself, I'm supposed to be a ghost. Only people who caused my death are supposed to see me, right? The young man smiled and walked over to her. Hey, fine girl, he said, I like you. I'd love for you to be my date. If you don't mind, of course. Ngozi was taken aback by his boldness. Wow, that's fast, she replied. You should calm down. Are you one of those men 
who just go for what they want without thinking the young man smiled even more look at you he said admiring her you are so beautiful and well dressed why should i come down when i see something i like because was confused what is this guy saying she thought how can he say i'm well dressed when i'm wearing clothes covered in blood she glanced down at herself still seeing the blood on her clothes the young man interrupted her thought by the way my name is nathaniel he said introducing himself i'm a copper serving in this village nice name ngozi replied i'm ngozi and i'm on a mission a mission nathaniel repeated raising an eyebrow well that doesn't matter to me all i want is your contact ngozi smiled you can get my contact she said but only on one condition nathaniel stood there smiling still holding the empty feeling in his hand where ngozi's presence had just been she played me he thought chuckling to himself the strange feeling of excitement stayed in his heart as he continued working he had no idea that no one else had seen ngozi people around had been staring at him thinking he was speaking to himself back at the hospital time was running out for ngozi to return to her body the clock was ticking fast and she knew she had just few minutes left she had to hurry to make sure she could get back in time her body lay motionless on the hospital bed unaware of the supernatural adventure her spirit had been on at the hospital Dennis was still anxiously watching the time doctor can't you wait a little longer Dennis asked the doctor shook his head i've kept my promise mr Dennis. there's nothing more i can do it's time the doctor headed toward ngozi's bed just as he was about to perform his final check and declare her condition something extraordinary happened boom ngozi woke up suddenly gasping for air her chest rising and falling rapidly as she breathed heavily everyone in the room stared in shock ngozi but where have you been the doctor exclaimed surprised by her sudden awakening ngozi blinked her mind racing as she tried to recall everything that had happened i can't explain it she replied trying to catch her breath what am i doing here you were unconscious for a while and we didn't think you would wake up Dennis said but here you are alive and well ngozi smiled faintly i remember everything but i didn't want to worry anyone i was on a mission the doctor looked puzzled but didn't press further welcome back ngozi i always had hope you would wake up we just couldn't understand what kept you in that state it's a long story doctor ngozi said glancing at Dennis. but it's all in the past now thank you Dennis, for everything Dennis was surprised you know my name but how you were unconscious the whole time ngozi laughed softly i may have overheard the doctor talking while i was out the doctor gave a slight smile well it's good to see you wake and fine but you will need regular checkups to make sure everything is in order don't forget that ngozi nodded yes doctor i'll come for the checkups dennis then stood up come on ngozi let's get you home you've had quite a journey today ngozi stood still feeling a little weak but determined to leave the hospital thank you again doctor she said as they walked towards the door dennis led ngozi to his car a small vehicle parked just outside the hospital entrance he opened the door for her and she slid into the passenger seat still trying to process everything that had happened you own this car ngozi asked curiously glancing around the interior dennis laughed yeah it's not much but it gets me from one place to another it's manageable manageable it's more than that ngozi smiled it's a good car thanks dennis replied starting the engine ready to go ngozi nodded and they drove off the car moved smoothly through the town as dennis drove her around showing her different parts of the area but after a while she noticed something odd they had been driving for quite some time yet they still hadn't arrived at their destination wait a minute ngozi said looking out the window where exactly are we going 
Dennis hesitated for a moment before replying. To be honest, I don't have a place to take you. I don't really have a home at the moment. But I didn't want to tell you before because I didn't want you to worry. Cody stared at him, surprised. You don't have a place to stay? Dennis sighed. Yeah, I've been struggling a bit but it's okay. I'll figure something out. I was hoping to help you first. Ngozi felt a pang of sympathy for him. Despite everything he had done for her, Dennis was also going through his own challenges. He had saved her, taking care of her in the hospital, and now he was driving her around with nowhere to go. Yet, he hadn't mentioned his own troubles once. You should have told me, Ngozi said quietly. I don't have much either, but we could have helped each other. Dennis gave her a small smile. I guess I just didn't want to add to your worries. As they continued driving, Ngozi's mind raced with thought. She had been given a second chance at life, but now she wasn't sure where to go or what to do next. The mission she had been on while she was unconscious felt like a distant dream, and now reality was hitting hard. Look, Dennis said after a while, if you need a place to stay for the night, I can take you to a small guest house I know. It's not fancy, but it's safe. Ngozi touched for a moment. That sounds fine. Dennis, let's go there. They drove in silence for a while until they arrived at the guest house. It was a small modest building tucked away in a quiet part of the city. Dennis parked the car and they both got out. I'll pay for your stay here tonight, Dennis offered. You need a place to rest after everything you've been through. Thank you, Dennis, Ngozi said touched by his kindness but what about you where will you stay dennis shrugged don't worry about me i'll figure something out Ngozi watched as dennis went to the front desk to arrange a room for her she couldn't help but feel grateful for everything he had done for her but at the same time she knew she had to figure out her own path from here as she settled into the small guest room Ngozi lay down on the bed Staring up at the ceiling, her mind was filled with questions about what the future held. She had been given another chance at life, but she didn't know where to begin. Her thoughts drifted back to the strange encounters she had while she was unconscious. The people she had met, the missions she had completed. It all seemed like a distant memory now, but deep down, she knew it had changed her in ways she couldn't yet understand. She thought about Nathaniel, the young man who had seen her when no one else could. What had happened there? Why had he been able to see her? So many questions lingered in her mind, but for now, she pushed them aside. There would be time to figure it all out later. For now, she was still alive, and that was what mattered. As the night grew darker, Ngozi closed her eyes, letting herself drift into a peaceful sleep, knowing that tomorrow would bring new challenges and new opportunities. The day after Dennis and Ngozi had their conversation, she woke up at the guest house, feeling a bit unsure about everything. The night before, Dennis had mentioned that he didn't have a house because he needed to talk to his fiancée, Mary, before he could bring Ngozi to live with him. It seemed that Mary was the one who needed to give her approval. Dennis had promised to come back the next day, and he did. He knocked gently on her door, and when she opened it, she smiled at him. Dennis, as usual, greeted her with his playful and kind attitude. But something felt different today. She couldn't quite tell what it was. As they sat down, Ngozi asked the question that had been bothering her since yesterday. Where did you stay last night? She inquired, wanting to know more about Dennis. But Dennis, instead of answering her directly, gave a soft laugh and quickly changed the subject. He told her, I want to take you somewhere today, with a smile that didn't reveal much. Ngozi, curious and still wondering about his sudden change in behavior, got ready to go with him. She wasn't sure where Dennis was taking her, but she trusted him, so she decided not to ask any more questions. She gathered her things and followed him to the car. Dennis opened the door for her. 
as always showing his polite manners, and soon they were on the road. As they drove, Ngozi watched the streets pass by and wondered where they were headed. The road seemed unfamiliar, and with each turn, her curiosity grew stronger. She glanced over at Dennis, hoping he would tell her where they were going. But he kept his eyes on the road, giving no hints. The silence between them wasn't uncomfortable, but it was full of mystery. Ngozi's mind began to race. Was Dennis taking her to meet his fiancée, Mary? Or was there something else he wasn't telling her? The thought swelled in her head, but she stayed quiet, knowing that Dennis would reveal the truth when he was ready. After what felt like hours of driving, they finally pulled into a long, wide driveway. At the end of it stood a large, beautiful mansion. Ngozi's eyes widened in surprise. The house was massive, with tall windows and elegant gardens surrounding it. She had never seen such a grand home before. And for a moment, she couldn't believe it was real. Dennis parked the car and turned to look at her. He gave her a small smile, noticing the shock on her face. He then said, Welcome, this is where I live. Ngozi blinked, unsure of what she had just heard. This is your house, she asked in disbelief. Dennis nodded calmly, as if it were no big deal. At first, Ngozi doubted him. She thought maybe he was still joking, like he usually did when they were chatting. How could Dennis own such a large and beautiful mansion? It seemed too good to be true. But as she stepped out of the car and looked up at the house again, she realized he wasn't kidding. This was indeed Dennis' home, and it was bigger and more stunning than she ever could have imagined. The mansion stood proudly, with its wide steps leading up to a grand entrance. The gardens around it were full of colorful flowers and neatly trimmed hedges, giving the whole place a peaceful and luxurious feeling. Ngozi could hardly believe her eyes. Dennis watched her with a knowing look, amused by her reaction. He didn't say much, but his expression showed that he was pleased with her surprise. For a moment, they both stood there in silence, taking the beauty of the house and its surroundings. Ngozi, still feeling a bit overwhelmed, finally allowed herself to believe it. She turned to Dennis, her mind racing with a thousand thoughts. How had he managed to keep this a secret from her? Why hadn't he mentioned anything about this before? The truth was now in front of her, and though she didn't fully understand it yet, she knew that this day had changed everything. As she looked at the mansion, and she felt a mix of emotion, excitement, confusion, and a bit of nervousness. As they entered the house, Ngozi felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. She hadn't lived in a place like this for a long time. Dennis mentioned that he had multiple houses, and a joke lingered in the air about his wealth. Ngozi, still uncertain, joked about him being a ritualist, which made Dennis laugh heartedly. He reassured her that he was just a regular guy who liked to play around. Once inside, Dennis wanted to tell her something important, but Ngozi interrupted him. I like you too. She declared, feeling bold. She had been hoping he would express his feelings. But Dennis quickly clarified that he admired her way of speaking, not her in that way. He explained that he had a fiancé, which caught Ngozi off guard. Despite the unexpected news, she remained composed. I appreciate your honesty, she said, showing her maturity. I hope your fiancé isn't dramatic. Dennis confirmed that she wasn't like that and he welcomed Ngozi to her new home, which felt like a small blessing. He told her to freshen up and join them for dinner. Who is us? Ngozi inquired, curious about what else would be there. Dennis revealed that his fiancée and his younger brother were also home. This made Ngozi a little nervous, but she knew she had to meet them. She promised to be ready soon. When Ngozi walked into the dining room, she was greeted by a warm atmosphere. The table was set with delicious food, and she saw Dennis's brother, Nathaniel, sitting beside his fiancée. Mary, Dennis introduced Ngozi to Mary, who welcomed her warmly. I hope you are comfortable here, Mary said, making Ngozi feel at ease.
I am grateful for your kindness, Ngozi replied, feeling thankful. She didn't expect such warmth after everything she had been through. Just as they were getting to know each other, Nathaniel recognized Ngozi. What a small word, he exclaimed, surprising her. They shared a laugh, reminiscing about their past encounters. I should have thanked you more for your help, Ngozi said to Nathaniel, feeling guilty. He joked about how she left him when it was his turn to be helped. They laughed together, feeling a connection that was once lost. As they chatted, Ngozi realized that this was a new beginning for her. She felt accepted and valued for the first time in a long while. The warmth of the dining room made her heart swell with joy. She thought about how life had changed for her since she met Dennis and Nathaniel again. Why they shared stories over dinner, Ngozi felt a sense of belonging. The laughter and friendly banter helped her forget her past troubles. If only for a moment, she could see that Dennis and Mary were in love, and it gave her hope that happiness could exist after hardship. As the evening continued, the conversation flowed, and Ngozi began to relax. She learned about Dennis's family, their adventures, and their hopes for the future. She listened attentively, realizing that she had a lot to learn from them. As the sun set outside, the warmth of friendship filled the room. Ngozi felt a lightness in her heart. She knew that she was in a safe place, surrounded by people who cared about her. It was a feeling she had almost missed for a long time. While the laughter continued, she made a silent wish. She hoped that this was the start of a new chapter in her life. One filled with love, friendship and hope. For the first time in years, Ngozi felt a spark of joy, a glimmer of the future that could be bright. As the evening drew to a close, Dennis offered to show her around the house. She accepted eagerly, excited to learn more about the place that would be her new home for now. She felt grateful for the chance to start anew and to create the memories with these wonderful people. The night ended with promises of tomorrow's adventures and the comfort of knowing she was no longer alone. With a heart full of hope, Ngozi drifted off to sleep, ready to embrace whatever came next. Their days were filled with laughter, challenges and dreams of the future. However, things took a turn when feelings began to change. Dennis and Mary, who had been in a relationship for a long time, were facing a big problem. They had broken up and Dennis felt sad and alone. He stopped talking to everyone, including his brother Nathaniel and Ngozi, who had just come into his life. Nathaniel liked Ngozi very much. He admired her kindness, beauty, and intelligence. But he was also aware of Dennis's feelings for Mary, and he didn't want to hurt his friend. Nathaniel wanted to show Ngozi how he felt, but he didn't want to create more problems in their group. One day, as the sun rose brightly, Nathaniel and Dennis were sitting together in the living room. Dennis looked down, lost in his thoughts. Nathaniel, trying to lighten up the mood, decided to ask Dennis about what was happening with Mary. Dennis sighed deeply and said he didn't want to talk about it. Nathaniel could sense the tension in the room and wondered how he could help. Later that day, as they were getting ready to go out, Nathaniel noticed Ngozi walking by. He smiled at her and felt a rush of excitement. He had to find a way to express his feelings. But then, he remembered Dennis and Mary's situation. It was complicated. A few days passed, and the atmosphere in the house remained heavy. Dennis continued to ignore both Nathaniel and Ngozi. The silence was deafening. Nathaniel tried to be supportive of Dennis, but he also wanted to encourage Ngozi who was starting to feel like a guest in the house rather than a friend. One morning, Nathaniel woke up early, determined to change things. He approached Dennis and told him he needed to talk. Dennis was still upset, but he listened. Nathaniel explained that it was important for them to communicate and that holding on to grudges was not good for their relationship. Dennis nodded, understanding the truth in his brother's words. Meanwhile, Ngozi had been trying to get Dennis's attention. She knew he was hurting, but she also wanted to connect with him. One day, 
she gathered the courage to ask him to drop her off at work. Dennis was hesitant but agreed. During the ride, the air was thick with tension, but Ngozi tried her best to lighten the mood. Why are you always so serious? She asked with a smile, but Dennis remained silent, lost in his thoughts. After dropping her off, Ngozi felt disappointed. She wanted to be friends with him, but it seemed like he wasn't ready to let go of his anger. Days turned into weeks, and still, Dennis and Ngozi hardly spoke. Nathaniel felt torn between his loyalty to Dennis and his growing feelings for Ngozi. He wanted to support both of them, but didn't know how. He decided to take a leap of faith and confess his feelings to Ngozi. One evening, as Nathaniel sat with Ngozi, he muted the courage to tell her how he felt. I really like you, he said. To his surprise, Ngozi smiled back. She appreciated his honesty, but also explained that she wasn't ready for a relationship, especially with all the tension in the house. Nathaniel respected her decision, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he wanted to be more than friends. He believed in love, and he wanted Ngozi to know that she was special to him. He continued to support her, hoping that one day they could be together. As time passed, Dennis started to reflect on his actions. He realized that holding on to anger was making him unhappy. He missed his friendship with Nathaniel and Ngozi. One day, he decided it was time to reach out. He approached Nathaniel and Ngozi and told them he was sorry for shutting them out. I'm still hurting, he admitted, but I don't want to lose my friends. Nathaniel and Ngozi smiled, happy to have Dennis back. They all hugged, feeling a weight lift off their shoulders. They promised to be there for each other no matter what. With time, Dennis and Ngozi began to rebuild their friendship. They spent more time together, laughing and sharing stories. As they got closer, Dennis realized that he had developed feelings for Ngozi. He admired her spirit and strength. She was not just a friend. She was someone he truly cared about. One day, after a long day at work, Dennis finally found the courage to tell Ngozi how he felt. They were sitting together in the garden, surrounded by blooming flowers. I like you, Ngozi, he confessed. You make me happy and I want to be with you. Ngozi was taken aback. She had been feeling the same way but was afraid to say anything. I like you too, Dennis, she replied, her eyes sparkling with joy. They shared their first kiss under the setting sun, feeling as if the world had stopped for a moment. Nathaniel, seeing their connection grew, felt happy for her friends. He knew he had to support their relationship and was glad that they found each other. They all became closer and the bond between them deepened. As the weeks went by, Ngozi got a job she had been hoping for. She was excited about her new journey and shared the news with Dennis and Nathaniel. They celebrated together, cheering her on as she began this new chapter in her life. Dennis, feeling more confident in his new relationship with Ngozi, supported her in every way possible. He wanted to be her rock, just as she had been for him. They shared their dreams, their fears, and their love for each other. Months passed, and the trio continued to grow together. Dennis learned to let go of his past with Mary and embrace his present with Ngozi. They enjoyed exploring their city, going on adventures, and making memories that would last a lifetime. One day, Nathaniel surprised them both by organizing a picnic in the park. They brought their favorite fruit, and the sun shone brightly as they laughed and played games. It was a perfect day, filled with joy and laughter. As they sat together, watching the sunset, Dennis looked at Ngozi and smiled. I'm glad we are together, he said. You mean a lot to me. Ngozi blushed and replied. You mean a lot to me too. I never expected to find love in such a complicated time. Nathaniel chimed in. Love has a way of finding us when we least expect it. They all agreed that life was unpredictable but they were grateful for the journey they shared. As time went on, Dennis and Ngozi's love blossomed. They became inseparable, facing challenges together and celebrating their successes. They often reflected on their journey, realizing how far they had come. Eventually, Dennis and Ngozi decided to take their relationship to the next level. 
with Nathaniel's encouragement, Dennis planned a special date to express his desire for a future together. Under the stars one evening, Dennis held Ngozi's hand and said, I want to spend my life with you. Will you marry me? Tears of happiness filled Ngozi's eyes as she nodded. Yes, I will marry you. They embraced tightly, knowing they had found true love. As they planned their wedding, the three friends celebrated their bond, grateful for the lessons learned along the way. They understood that love, friendship and forgiveness could lead to beautiful beginnings. Their journey wasn't just about finding love, it was about growing together, supporting one another and never losing hope. They learned that even in the face of challenges, love would always find a way to shine through. In the end, Dennis, Ngozi and Nathaniel built a beautiful life together, cherishing their friendship and the love they shared. They knew that no matter what life threw their way, they would always have each other's backs. And so, their story continued, filled with happiness, love and endless possibilities. They had found their way back to each other, proving that true love and friendship could conquer all obstacles. They lived happily ever after, and the village remembered them for their kindness, resilience and the love they shared. The most important lesson in this story is that never lose hope. Your helper will locate you. Always stay positive in everything you do. And remember that true love and friendship will guide you through life's challenges. And with that, my dear friends, our story comes to a close. But remember, the magic of storytelling lives on. Waiting to whisk us away on new adventures. Where the wonders of imagination know no bounds. Goodbye for now. And may your dreams be filled with joy, wonder and endless possibility. Thank you so much for watching. Please kindly comment, like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting stories.